Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. So, we got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys, sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God, you made it. Yeah. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. I am Dustin Goes to Hollywood. I am standing right behind you. Oh, <laughs> spooky. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, <laughs> a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. And I think that's the first time I've actually done that bit this entire season. You might be right. Yeah. Huh. I think you might be right. I guess regular listeners will note that they're not hearing another voice on the show right now, which is, of course, Nathan. That's because uh, apparently he's dead and I've got a boxes of his ashes to prove it. So the term you're looking for is urn. Urn. Yes. Urn. Yeah. Well, I didn't put him in an urn. He's just in a box. Like I got a I got an Amazon box right here. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I mean, that's that's what he deserves. Oh, yeah. 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 Like, oh, what's in that old shoe box? Oh, Nathan. <laughs> what, what kind of shoe box would Nathan go in? Like a like a New Balance? Or? Uh, oh, man, that's a tough call. Mm. Um, Keds? I was I was gonna I I was gonna say Converse, but mm. that's that's too that's too skinny of a box. Uh, I got it. I got it. It's it's those Toms shoes. Ah. Definitely a pair of Toms. Yeah, he's a pair of Toms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. But interestingly enough, ah. I did not see a body. So hmm. mm. that's suspicious. <laughs> and it would be hard to miss <laughs> so uh thank you to for tuning in everyone <laughs> nathan nathan misses one episode and we're just dragging the <laughs> fuck out of him is this what is, is this what you guys do when i'm not on an episode 100 oh, i think okay, my cool, go-to cool. is you're dead oh yeah time. nice nice i don't listen to the episodes i'm not on so yeah one of these times it might be true <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's not going to bode well for anybody. <laughs> I did go to a vampire ball last night, so I might be dead now. Ooh, or you might be undead. Ooh. Ooh. And it's November. This is not spooky season, but somehow it's still trickling in here in this month. Uh, November counts. Yeah, November is like the uh, post-spooky season where there's just some residuals. Yeah. yeah. It, it's it's like there's punk and post-punk. Mm, that's a very good point. Yeah, this is post-punk Halloween for yeah, sure. Like th- like we're in we're in like the at the drive-in oh, boy. section of spooky movies. God. It. So, so Halloween is more like the Ramones or like the Sex Pistols, and we're like, yeah, we're the Blink One Eighty Two of of <laughs> no, what? Of, no, that's pop punk. Yeah, you're, well, oh, post punk. You said you, sorry. You've ru- you've ruined this whole metaphor. Excuse me, excuse me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Anyway, uh, this is actually the post-punk version of podcast, too. This is the Silver Linings Playlist. I don't know about that, but okay. (laughs) As Mally mentioned. uh, And we're talking about The Invisible Man, the remake from 2020 by Lee Whannell. I think this is a very interesting movie that we're talking about because for those who don't remember, this movie was like... For most people, the last movie they saw, uh, March of 2020. <laughs> this uh, this was the last movie I saw in theater. So mm-hmm. m- the movie I was working on, we shut down on March 13th, mm-hmm. which was Friday the 13th, yes, which I found hilarious. Yep. I saw this movie on the 15th. Oh, all right. This was also one of those first ones that were like, you could rent it to own for like 48 hours while it's still in yeah, theaters. Yeah, it was, it was like 20, 25 bucks or something. $20, yeah. which is, I, I guess that's fair, but poof, that's insane. <laughs> And yeah, this surprisingly, this movie did very well. Like, it's kind of shocking, uh, given given the circumstances. And I think is is this going to be one of those rare episodes where we liked the movie for the most part? I, I got very few criticisms of this movie. I know you got a problem with that third act, but and not even. And I have a, I have a problem with literally the final scene. Everything else in this movie kind of works for me. Uh, there there's a couple of things where I got to kind of suspend my disbelief a little bit. There there there's some silly bits. Yeah. For the most part, this is a solid fucking movie. It's kind of funny because, you know, everyone that wasn't on the up and up are like, oh, this is one of those other dark universe movies. And Lee Whannell's like, absolutely fucking not. This yeah. is just a movie. I did. <laughs> and it, it kind of made me be like, man, I kind of wish there was a like a dark universe. If we if this was the start and he was like, let, let me do a Wolfman movie next. I'd be like, let him do it. Just let him. Oh, man, I would. Yeah. Like, give it. Give him that franchise. Like, I'd. I'm curious to see what he'd do. Like, what what would he do as, like, a Dracula movie? Ooh. What would that be like? I don't know. But you know what's funny? The Wolfman would definitely keep going with those upgrade aesthetics. Oh, yeah. Like, the camera work. Oh, man, that would be so cool. Oh, dude, the... I mean, the camera work in this movie is fantastic. Mm, so good. Yeah, that, that robotic camera straight out of Upgrade. If you haven't seen Upgrade, Lee Whannell's other movie. Got some uh, pretty cool visual stuff going on in that movie, too. But no, this movie is this movie's solid. People sleep on Upgrade. Mm-hmm. That movie was... It's one of those movies where it's like, this should not be as good as it is. No. 
But it's also one of my one of the, my examples of like we got to give Logan Marshall Green more stuff to do, guys. Oh like, yeah, no, he, he's got to give him more. He's good in like the few things he's been in that have been big. Yeah, he's even like one of the sole reasons that Devil movie is watchable is because he's in oh, it. Oh, that good. yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's one of the better parts of Prometheus. Yeah, exactly. I've been championing that dude since the first time I saw him. I was like, yeah, give this guy more stuff. Yeah. It's fucking great. So I'm glad I'm glad Upgrade at least got him a little more uh, spotlight there. And The Invitation. Oh, hell yeah. A movie that I've been yeah. dancing around putting on this show for a while. Hell yes. Yeah. But The Invisible Man, uh, like I said, if you haven't, if you never listened to our show before, we like to watch movies such as The Invisible Man where things are not so bright and shiny by the end of it. Even in this case, which I would say this is more like the You Go Girl kind of uh, movie, but it's still kind of bleak by the time the credits start rolling. So. Yes, because my argument for why the final scene doesn't work will prove that this is a bleak ending. Okay. Well, there, I got one thing I can say that I know I was like, uh, it's still not great because of this one thing, but we'll talk about it when we get there. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. So The Invisible Man, it worked for me the first time. It worked for me even better the second time. This movie is just so watchable. Like, everything is operating at the peak of its ability. The camera work, the score. Right. Which is fucking great. Very minimal, but very effective. And the performances, man. Elizabeth Moss acting against nothing and crushing it. Uh, Yet another great actor who just happens to be part of an insane cult. I was going to ask, and I didn't know if it was worth bringing up, but like, does that diminish her? Her star power at all like i i mean she crushes it in fucking everything she's in but then i'm like oh you're one of those people <laughs> well that's the 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 sheer irony for me is that she is uh for those of you who don't know we're talking about scientology uh-huh. um i i live like two blocks away from their base camp that building is so scary oh, i know it's terrifying so, just giant letters scientology <laughs> um but like it's funny because she's a scientologist but then she stars in the handmaid's mm-hmm. tale mm-hmm. and i'm like do you, she has to see the irony in that right I, I don't know if it's lost on her or not there's but no way it's not no no she's one of those few people too that were like raised in the church and, yeah. and just like go to it as a tax haven but man which i will say every time i see her because i actually haven't really wa- i've seen like bits and pieces of handmaid's tale mm-hmm. uh, for the longest time i thought it was called the handmaiden's tale that's a, another movie that's great the handmaiden <laughs> ah well <laughs> so good like it, it literally it was like six months ago it was like right after i moved to la i saw a big billboard for handmaid's tale mm-hmm. and i was like Oh, I've been saying that wrong for years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can be forgiven because there is another fantastic movie with a similar name that very close to that. So Yeah, I haven't really actually watched that show, but I like she's all like she's just, you know, from like I know her from Mad, Mad Men because yep. Mad Men is fucking great and she's so good in it. And, and she's great in uh, Us. Yeah. Past episode we talked about. Yeah. She's fantastic in that for the little bit she's in. And she is incredible in this movie. Mm-hmm. I, I want her to play a villain in something like I know she gets to do a little bit of it in Us, but I want her to be like a straight up like. <laughs> almost like uh, Michael C. Hall in Gamer just finger snapping kind of villain like I want to oh, see that'd her. be amazing <laughs> honestly I fucking love Gamer it's such a stupid movie it's such a stupid movie. movie's ridiculous <laughs> and I fucking love it it's so dumb but it's so much fun yeah going going back to your little bit about how well this movie did mm-hmm. I think it's because this is one of those movies because it came out right before COVID like the advertisements were up mm-hmm. for a better like the there were posters for the invisible man up for almost a year outside yep. of movie theaters because yep. like theaters were closed and so they just didn't change the ads so, like mm-hmm. the promotion for this movie like whether like it wasn't on purpose it was just because of the pandemic but there were posters for this movie everywhere yeah. for months it, it kind of had the same effect of like people got so exhausted of seeing the kingsman trailer because it's like it was in front of everything because nothing new was coming out oh like, my we god it's coming so it's like <laughs> invisible man yeah like that's all you would see it was yeah you saw post for most of 2020 and a lot of 2021 you saw invisible man posters mm-hmm. and you saw the trailer for kingsman and mm-hmm. the trailer or sorry kingsman, kingsman and the trailer for morbius yep that's all you saw every fucking where it was like i don't believe this movie's ever coming out with the king's man <laughs> but yeah this movie fantastic i guess we're already kind of getting in there let's start talking about some of the good stuff about the invisible man 
So the year, as we mentioned, is 2020. That year, <laughs> as it's come to be known, basically. The year we all forgot about, but also <laughs> experienced. The year is all you have to call it. It's just, you know, that yeah, year. That year. The year, yeah. The director, as we mentioned, also is Lee Winnell, who you may know is one of the co-creators of Saw, the Insidious universe, the Conjuring, all that good. Well, I guess he didn't really have that much of it to do with the Conjuring, but the Insidious portion of it he did. And Upgrade from 2018. And starred in both the first Saw and most of the Insidious movies. And don't forget, also, great cameo in Matrix Reloaded. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yes. Or Revolutions, it's one of those two. Boy, I did not know that. And when we did The Matrix last season, and I watched all three of those movies, and he came up. Oh, man, it took me aback. I was like, is that? That's <laughs> right. That's so funny. Yeah. Uh, the movie stars Olivia, uh, oh, excuse me, Oliver Jackson <laughs> Cohen, Elizabeth Moss, Storm Reed, Aldous Hodge, Harriet Dyer, and Michael Dorman. The budget was $7 million, and it managed to gross $143 million worldwide. Hell yeah. Talk about a success. Oof. And doing a lot with a little. This looks good for a $7 million movie. $7 million. Well, that's the benefits of shooting in Australia. Yeah, shot in Australia. That's right. For the most part. And besides, you know, uh, Elizabeth Moss, not a whole lot of star power, but Aldous Hodge, holy oh, shit. Beast. So fucking good in this movie. <laughs> so good. And the movie currently sits at, well-deserved, 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. That's insanely high, but it's an insanely good movie. <laughs> that is insanely high. I'm, I'm, I might drop it like a couple percent, maybe mm -hmm. down to like, like, like a high eighty, mm -hmm. high eighties, maybe for me personally. But okay, and honestly, it's, it's just, it's just because of the final scene. Okay, the final scene's a little odd, but I, I it's, 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 it's hard for me to dislike anything that involves Michael Dorman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He plays Tom, the brother. He is so good. Uh, anyone, if you audience DC, you as well, Nathan, uh, wherever you are in a in an urn, <laughs> ashy box. If you have not watched the Amazon Prime show Patriot, yes, please do because it is two of the most solid seasons of television of the past decade. Right on. I've heard very good things about that. Oh, it's it, his performance alone is worth it. Mm -hmm. But then just the way. Yeah, I, 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 I could talk about that show for hours. It's so good. Right on. This, this guy's got a very familiar face. Like, I, as soon as I saw him on screen, I was like, I know this guy from somewhere. And I went and looked it up, and I don't. Like, I don't recognize much of his filmography, but he has got a very familiar face. Yeah, bes besides this and Patriot, the only other big thing I can think of is uh, he's in that Apple show for all mankind. Right, which I have not seen, but I've heard good things about. Uh, the, the first season little rough like it barely passes the three episode rule Oof. like it's literally the final scene of the third episode like i was i was about to tap out and then the final scene of the third episode i was like oh that's interesting and then the fourth episode gets better got it and then season two damn near perfect okay and that's um what's that guy's name from suicide squad and all that stuff doing it too uh yeah yeah he was also in the killing uh joel joel a, something like that i don't know something he's he's watch joel kin kinnaman kinnaman yeah something him like that. him yeah. something like that yeah no he's he's really good in it as well yeah he's watchable and stuff and sharon van something got it i don't know Okay. Good show. Again, Michael, you put Michael Dorman in something, I'm going to watch it. He's just that good. I, that guy was, I, that's one of my notes. I was like, I want to see this guy in more stuff, please. Like, Dude, he's so good. Him and Aldous Hodge and even um, Harriet Dyer, the sister, I, I thought was really good. Yeah. And I would like to see her in more stuff too. Uh, pretty much the whole cast. <laughs> I know this, this whole cast is pretty solid. Also, shout out Michael Dorman again for being super Australian and you don't get a hint of it in that accent, mm -mm. Mm -mm. which is great. Very good covering that up. Well, uh, speaking of the trailer, let's let's go back and watch it again. I probably haven't seen this trailer since theaters. Yeah, probably. I feel like this is one of those trailers that you thought was giving away the whole movie, and they did a pretty good job of subverting that. When I think I think the story goes, uh, Jason Bloom wanted to reveal more of the story. Yeah, yeah. And Leigh Whannell like was like, "No, don't. Yeah, please don't." Good, good call. Honestly, this 
this is like the whole opening scene almost, the first 40 seconds of this trailer, and I'm like, probably gonna trim some of that up, but it's it's good. Are you okay? Uh, we'll say one of the sillier points in the movie is when he terminators through that window. Right? Uh, I, that's one of my notes. I'm like, how do you know how strong you have to be <laughs> to do that? And there's not a ring on his finger or nothing. That's just bare knuckles against that shit. Yeah, the, the, the handprint on the shower door is not in the movie, which is a smart decision. Yeah, there's there's a few things that... Because they reshot a couple scenes in Canada after production had wrapped. Yeah. Like, that's one of them right there. Yeah, the phone floating, yeah. Which is good, because that's the silliest part of this trailer for me, is the floating phone. It's so funny looking, though. I mean, I like that it's still someone in the movie, but that shot's not, which is smart. Yeah. Like, all, all the... The tropey stuff they cut out of the movie, which is great, because it's so much better for it. There's also some logistical stuff I guess I have questions about too. Yeah, there's a there's a few little things where you kind of be like, uh huh. Ah, uh, such a good shot. Oh yeah, dude. Like even knowing that was coming, that still it gets me every time. It's a good jump scare. Like thank God this guy's uh, never got a sneeze. His, his tummy never growls. <laughs> I know, right? Show yourself. I had an accident in the sink. <laughs> this this scene in the movie, the paint scene. At first, I was like, "What the? Like no fucking way!" And then it occurred. Something occurred to me that we'll talk about when we get to this scene. Mm. Let me help you. You can't help me. Yeah, the suit itself also, there's some logistical stuff <laughs> uh, that I, I, I guess I, I buy into, but in reality would not work that way. <laughs> I don't want to wear that suit. It looks like a bunch of blinking buttholes. But it being a suit solves one of the kind of plot holes of the originals. Yes, it does. The whole Invisible Man idea, if it's a potion or something like that, it just kind of falls apart pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah, let's uh, let's let's get into this some bit, shall we? I I think is this when uh, I mean I know there's a movie called Gaslight, but this is maybe <laughs> one of the most gaslit movies of all time. Yeah, they should they should have called it the Gaslighting Man. <laughs> the Gaslighting, the Gaslit Man. Uh, I just watched Don't Worry, Darling today. I'm so sorry. Pop culture reference. I, yeah, it, it tries to do similar kind of things a little bit with the Chris Pine character, but this movie does it to a T. Like. I think it works because you've got a character like Adrian who is so clever and manipulative and like makes her look so crazy. But we know the truth and she knows the truth and she's smart about it. And I think that's what makes this movie work is we're not following your typical horror movie victim that's just oblivious to everything. It's it kind of started for me like I'm sure there's other examples, but like Get Out was the first horror movie where I saw her. I'm like, oh, this character's smart. And other people just happen to be smarter to an extent at parts. And it's so much more fun to like be in on it with the character other than knowing more than they do and watching them trip up and everything like that. Like it's it's so well done. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I lost you for a second. <laughs> nope. Just, yeah. Yeah. Um, dude, this opening sequence, though. Oof. Holy shit. It's incredible. So, it's like, the it, the camera movement, the use of silence, Ooh. it's just, like, from the drop, just yes. pure tension. Yes. Up, well, up until he terminators through the window. Yeah. But, dude, it's so good. Also, that dog, that's the goodest boy. Yes. Yeah, well, other than the booty bump, but, you know, Listen, <laughs> you can't do much about that. It's a pup. Yeah. No, this um, this is like peak, like show don't tell. Less is more. Like we start right away. We know this is not a good situation. This girl is so terrified. And then how smart she is with like, let me put an app on my phone where I can watch him and make sure. Like I bumped into something. I'm not just gonna hope he didn't hear it. Let me check in real quick. You know? Yeah, it's so good. Well, and again, the use of silence. Like when she bumps into that doggy food tray, oh. it is so. Fucking loud. Yes. It's great. It's stomach dropping because you're like, oh, fuck no. And 
whew, they managed to do pretty good about like, nah, he, he didn't wake up from that shit. So I thought we were going to get the trope of like, she looks at the camera and he's gone or his eyes open. Like, I, I love that it doesn't do all that stuff. Yeah, they kind of play with like what you expect to happen. Yeah. And it's great. They they do that a few times in the movie where like they know like they know like the cliche and mm-hmm. they're like, uh, and we're not going to. It's kind of what they did with uh, the first Insidious movie, actually. Mm-hmm. Like when him and James Wan were writing it, they literally had a list of horror movie cliches. And whenever they got to one, they're like, OK, well, what's the opposite of that? Like mm-hmm. Insidious one, like when weird shit starts happening, they move. Yeah, they, they get they move out of the house. Yep. Smart. And it's kind of similar in this. It's like you ex- yeah, when she looks at the camera, you expect him to be gone. But it's like, nope, he's still there. Yep. It's um, fuck. I just had another example. Oh, well, maybe it'll come back to me. But no, I, I agree. I, I'm like, I like following a character that is smart and is doing the same things I would do. It's a it's a refreshing take on a horror movie, mm-hmm. uh, a smart main character. And, and it's very smart from the production side of things to like use an existing IP to tell this story because this is like how you modernize a remake. Like I know there's a lot of talks about that with remakes nowadays. Like how do you make it modern? This is smart because yes, you have an invisible man. Fantastic way to do it. I mean, this is like in the, the zeitgeist, the, the, the gaslighting movement, the me too movement, all this stuff. It's, Per- like it's the perfect time to do this movie and perfectly well done even from a male perspective i think which is really smart too and to make her the now, main did you pull a uh, did you pull a midsummer and are, <laughs> are you trying to see this from adrian's perspective no, no not instantly no no no, okay, no this good. guy this guy i mean he doesn't give you a chance to like well maybe anyways because right away <laughs> like if you if you try to if you try to defend this buck tooth motherfucker Ooh, yeah no this guy this guy is such a punchable face and his brother like terrible terrible human beings okay i will i won't take this slander against michael dorman <laughs> no um the, the, the guy doesn't give you a chance to like see if like you are th- this is a believe all women with little to no evidence because you see what little you do see you're like yeah this guy's i mean immediately punches again very hard to do especially with modern vehicles punch a glass window out maybe if he had a ring on or something to to do most of the damage but no that's bare knuckle right through the window but yeah he does turn into a terminator a little bit right there and it's scary it's yeah. a scary scene like him just like running out of the fucking trees oh i know and God. like him when he finds the diazepam the pills that she had on the ground it's like uh, jesus you know this is not gonna go well you're like ah fuck and Chekhov's diazepam too because it yeah. does come back in a big way yeah i like that they keep the tension going mm-hmm. with all this though like in the next scene when she walks out to the mailbox oh. and that like with the jogger dude mm-hmm. like that's a great little bit yeah it's so so smart they play with the tension so well in this movie and it feels it feels real it feels genuine like I love that we never see the physical abuse. There's no flashbacks. There's nothing like that. There's no like other than the scene of him telling her to open the door for the car or anything like that. Like we don't have to see all that. I my mind, especially when she's telling Aldous Hodge and, and his sister like what he did to her, like she says very little, but implies a lot. Oh yeah, for sure. And it feels like a real trauma victim. Like it is her going to the mailbox is her going to the moon. Yeah. Like she might as well be walking to the moon. And the fact that something as innocuous as someone jogging, it does sh- strike fear in this girl's heart. And I feel for her. Like just once I wish Elizabeth Moss had a, a happy movie where like she's in a good relationship and everything uh, turns out well for her. <laughs> well, that'd be nice to see. Um, I have one note, mm-hmm. which is just hell yeah, new ladder. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I, I had to hell yeah, tape off that laptop camera because I do the same thing. Uh, I, don't, I know it's fr- frivolous, but I'm like, no, thanks. Let's just put a piece of tape over that. <laughs> oh, no, I keep that shit wide open. <laughs> like, oh, y'all going to see some stuff. Bef- before we get to the ladder, though, I do I have one small critique about the writing in this movie, and it's kind of a pitfall you fall into, uh, I guess. I feel like there's an easy way to circumvent it, but no one ever says the phrase, nice to see you too, sis. <laughs> I'm like, I-, I get it. You can find a different way to make it known that that's her sister without her. Nobody talks like that. Nobody says, hey, bro. It's it's <laughs> funny because we loved that kind of writing in Walk Hard. We, well, yeah, that's exactly why we liked it so much in Walk it's Hard. It's like, here we are, the four Beatles in India. Yeah. <laughs> but then in this movie, it's like, Oh, hello, sister. Yeah. Of mine. It's like one movie we love it, one movie we hate it. My sister, who I've been estranged to for quite a while, but we make it work. Like, okay. Yeah. (laughs) 
how good is Aldous Hodge in this movie, dude? Oh, Holy he's fantastic. Shit. Like, he was so good. Like, I love the, the little bit with uh, him, his daughter trying to say she can drink the champagne. Mm-hmm. Just like all the back and forth, like mm-hmm. overlapping dialogue. So funny. I, I don't know why you're cheering because you can't have any. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, so good. great. No, you said I was mature for my age. She's a mature child. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, he was so good in Straight Outta Compton. Hell yes. And I looked it up. Did you, did you know he also does some voice acting in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas? Fantastic. He's a pedestrian, which I thought was pretty funny. Oh, weird. <laughs> So she goes to, you know, she gets the news from her sister that uh, Adrian's dead. It's been two weeks since then of a parent suicide. I love that she doesn't buy it right away. Very smart of her. Here's my question. Is it a conflict of interest to have your abuser's brother act as the lawyer executing a will? Well, like, is that, I feel like that would be some kind of conflict of interest. There. That's, that's the th- thing we know true and she knows sure that he would like there's nothing like there's no like official i like, guess you're right yeah police report sure on abuse or anything so yeah. um which also did you notice that tom the brother michael dorman's character all of his clothes are like a size or two too small i i noticed that yeah i was reading about, about that too that that was a conscious decision yeah that's a that's a nice little touch yeah i like that He's, he's two sizes too small compared to these two sisters. And I like that uh, Emily right away is like, nope, we don't need to hear this shit. You can email it to us. We don't have to. You, it says you have to read it. It says we don't, it doesn't say anything about us having to listen. It's yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> so great. The line where he says, you are physically close to him. Fuck, man. That was so creepy. Especially, I mean, I guess there's a question too. We, there's scenes where he could be there. He could not be there. It could be Tom. It could be Adrian. I definitely feel like he's in the room during this scene, right? I don't know. Um, like there's def like there's clues like you very like I didn't honestly didn't even pick this up on the time I saw it in the theater. I didn't pick it up until I watched it at home with subtitles on. But it's literally like every like every time he is for sure there, mm-hmm. you can very faintly hear the cameras clicking yes. like on the suit. That was going to be one of my uh, my notes about the suit is like if it's auto focused cameras, because it has to be. Yeah. Then you're going to hear that that shutter adjusting like every step you take. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, or anytime something passes in front of you. It's not a perfect science, which obviously this is science fiction. But yeah, no, I, I think that's fine. Again, that's me suspending my disbelief. It's fine. So she gets this money from him, five million bucks, and she decides she's going to open this bank account for just, just start spending it immediately. <laughs> I, I like that. The first thing she does is she she buys this girl because we she, they talked about uh, Aldous Hodge's daughter uh, Storm Reed. Well, technically, the first thing she does is buy a ladder. True, that's very true. She buys a ladder. <laughs> Hell yeah! Which also it's like it's like I got you a ladder and I'm giving you ten thousand dollars for the next. Yeah, I was going to say one hundred and twenty thousand dollars <laughs> every month. Like I, I'm I'm giving you one hundred. Twenty thousand yeah. dollars, <laughs> and you get a ladder. Yep. I mean, don't get me wrong. Nice looking ladder. It's a great ladder. What would a hundred twenty thousand dollar ladder look like? Like, is it automatic? Like, you just stand there, and it's like the things on the staircases that raise you. Yeah, it's a, I, at that at that you're describing an escalator. Yes, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just an escalator. <laughs> No, I, I love this, too. And I'm like, you know, if the movie ends right here, pretty great movie. Like, very uplifting. We don't even cover it on the show. Like, yeah. it's lovely. <laughs> great, great little pick-me-up short. Mm-hmm. On, honest, honestly, my pick-me-up, first 20 minutes of this movie. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just cut it right here, which you, they, they have the little dance in the champagne. It's pretty great. Um, dude, you know, killer cinematography, though, in regards to, like, the kind of creeping camera movements. Oh, man, yeah. Like, uh, they're almost like POV shots. Yes. And, like... Th- the use the use of like the dead space and like the negative space is great you're always looking like you're always searching the frame mm-hmm. like just looking for a hint of something which is funny because i mean obviously you're not going to see anything unless it's going to be like intentional but, right and th- and at that point the suit is either glitching out or whatever but like yeah for the most part there is nothing to see in this movie for all the negative spaces there which somehow makes it work like it's fun to just imagine yeah which makes it scarier yes of course it's great and I, I do like that all these shots, like right here when they're celebrating and there's a, there's the cameras like peeking out around the corner. It's supposed to be in play. Oh, he's here. He's, he's watching all of this. And some of the POV shots, uh, I saw that Lee Winnell was like, well, that it wasn't intended to be POV. It's more like we're tracking him from behind. Like we're following him with it. And it works both ways. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's somehow brilliant of like, let's do the exact opposite of what you think we would do. Like, let's just do the master and that's pretty much all of our coverage because why else, what else do we need to do? Like, the guy's invisible. <laughs> so. Which, you you know, people, are, people on set were like, 
this motherfucker can't shoot yep. anything. Like, motherfucker's not getting a goddamn piece of coverage. No coverage. <laughs> But I mean, it works like this, this first little instance here where she's cooking breakfast and everything's wide and, you know, she goes to leave. She drops the knife off the counter, but it doesn't clang to the floor. So, you know, he grabs it. Yeah. Turns the stove up. He's just being, he's, he's doing the thing that, that like paranormal activities do in horror movies. We're like, let's just fuck with him for the first act of the movie. Oh yeah. 100%. <laughs> but it works here because that's the whole point is to make her look crazy. Like, let me turn the stove up too high and burn all the food and everything like that. Well, and then like. Like the following scene where she's like kind of she hears something in the house at night and it's kind of walking around like mm-hmm. opens the door and just like again that little shot of just the breathing mm-hmm. so good which they amplify in the trailer like yes. the sound of him breathing I don't think you even hear him in the movie I think it's just the breath which is smart yeah like the lack the lack of sound it, it it's one of my favorite ways to use sound <laughs> and I gotta say this fake breath much better than the fake breath in the social network mm-hmm. 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 agreed. Yeah, no, the uh, the subtlety that they that the invisible man has in this movie in this these first couple acts is is incredible. Like, oh, dude, I mean the the next scene in the bedroom. Uh, oh, oh my god, fuck! Like it's it's so funny too because there's so many throwbacks right here to the original Invisible Man with like the butt print in the chair and she throws a sheet on it and you think it's going to form the figure of a person but it doesn't it's yeah. just a chair and then she sees the mannequin dressed up in the the hat which is very much the invisible man's get up in that first movie yeah like so brilliant the camera flashes like of him taking pictures of her sleeping so perfect because they they downplay it so much it's almost like uh did i see that did i really see that or what and him standing on the sheets is so effective. Oh, that's, yeah, that's fantastic. The, the lack of score to here, like, it's just creepy. And again, she knows what's up right away. And I love it. Like, the fact that she goes to the brother and is like, he has found a way to turn himself invisible. Like, I know exactly what is going. The guy works in optics. Like, of course, he's turned to <laughs> figured out a way to turn invisible. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah. Aldous Hodge coming in, though, when she screams and he's got, like, enough muscles for two people. <laughs> like, oh, my God. He's, he's. Jesus, this dude. He, like, he, he Ramboed Rambo, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, th- she goes to her sister's house and her sister's like, oh, I don't want to speak to you. You sent me that nasty email. And I'm like, dude, just look at her face. You know she didn't send that email. It's, it's a, one of the other parts of the movie where I'm like, I don't know if I believe this, but. I guess they built up enough of like, yeah, we weren't really close to begin with. I only came to rescue you because you asked me to kind of thing. But like, I don't know, man, you you can just look at Elizabeth Moss's face and know she didn't send that email. Like, it's so transparent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just I kept the whole movie. I just kept thinking out. I mean, it's the, the the empathy is overwhelming. Like, it's just this poor woman. And they make her like when she goes to the job interview and she doesn't have her stuff. And she's like, no, I know I put it in here. <laughs> Which also it's like, do, do you not like you, you don't you don't check before you leave the house? Well, that's I, I have a feeling that's implied. Like she looked, she packed her stuff up and she went to leave and he just took it out. Maybe he was in the car. And he like took it out while I was in the back seat or something. But yeah, how, how, how? I, I mean, if she's those aren't invisible. Well, if she's driving and she's got the thing in the back seat, he could easily just take him out. I don't know, shove him under the seat and then put it back in. I, I, I find way that that part doesn't bother me so much, but the email thing really bothered me. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, she she passes out. Turns out she's been drugged with the same drug that she drugged Adrian with at the beginning, and then her finding the bottle is i i i would shit my pants like, oh yeah i'd be like nope nope fuck this oh, fuck no i gotta get back in the shower right away because i just soiled myself right here <laughs> and the, i read too that the reason they cut out that lee went out decided to cut out the the handprint on the shower door a i feel like it's tropey anyway like why would he do that and b finding the bottle is so much scarier in that moment oh 100 percent. yeah you don't you don't need you don't need the hand thing that's, no. a, that's a trailer that's a trailer shot yeah it, it's a it's a hat on a hat like we don't need two jumps like two scary parts in this 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 one works so much better and so she she you know she starts calling out to him she knows he's there and she decides to call his cell phone number and she hears it in the attic of the house she's in which is terrifying she goes up up to the attic using the ladder. That ladder is Chekhov's ladder too. Comes in handy. I'm telling you, man, good ladder gets you far. <laughs> Getting a surprise text from an unknown number. Fuck that. That's <laughs> horrific. <laughs> that is the stuff of nightmares. That, that's the scariest part of the movie to you, huh? Yeah. The, getting a, a text from an unknown number, no matter what it says. Yeah, terrifying for me. <laughs> This movie doesn't do a lot of jump scares, but when it does, man, and even though it's in the trailer, this paint scene. That paint scene, man, it'll get you. Whew, 
it's it is creepy. <laughs> I did realize because like the first time I saw this movie and like like she she follows the paint trail in the kitchen, sees it in the sink, and then she gets attacked. Mm-hmm. I was like, paint does not like no, you don't wash that off like that. Like that's not how that works. Not on camera lenses either. It occurred to me that's the first hint that there's two people. Yep. Well, that's the question too, I guess. Like, when do you think it's Tom? When do you think it's Adrian? Like, do you think it's Tom here fighting her or Adrian? Because I feel like it's Adrian and Tom is the one that got the paint on him. Yes, I agree. Okay. Oh, there's multiple suits. <laughs> throughout Which I movie. will say, <laughs> motherfucker strong. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing too. He's still a Terminator. <laughs> Which is, that's one of my issues with the final scene. Yeah. But I will say, I somehow of all the things, because there's a lot of CGI in this movie, obviously, mm-hmm. the table flipping over might be the worst CGI in the whole movie. Oh, him flipping the table over after he throws her on it? Like, the the table flipping over looks so awkward. Yeah, I guess so. I, it's hard to do an invisible fight, right? Like, I mean, I think they do, ve- like, this fight should be really goofy. Like, it's just Elizabeth Moss floating in the air, but the camera work coupled with her performance and and the practical effects oh yeah no but besides the weirdness of the table flipping yeah i think they do a fucking great job with this like it Mm -hmm. it looks great like it looked like well because they actually had her fighting someone in a green screen costume yes so like you like she actually is struggling against someone in this and it looks real and it's it's interesting too because to get those robotic camera movements like you see an upgrade and stuff that you literally used a robotic camera and lee winnell would i read would have to do like the same exact scene multiple times with the green suit guy and without it and because it's robotic you can get exact same motions yeah and then they could just paint them out it's easier to paint them out in 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 post but yeah i also saw that this whole thing because there's so much practical effects going on here and like people in green screen suits and guys like stunt guys with strings pulling stuff that you watch it he literally has someone counting off like a ballet off camera like if you watch the behind the scenes it's someone going and one and two and three and yeah. four and like She's doing all that plus acting with no one there, really, other than the guy in the green screen suit. But it's like... It's just... It's solid filmmaking, dude. Mm-hmm. The CGI is is not here to enhance anything other than the background and make everything look normal. It's, it's literally to t- just to take shit away. Yes. <laughs> Which it's... It feels like it would be easier to do that, but it's so much harder than putting something there yeah. than it is taking away. But it's seamless. Like... I, I, the table's a little goofy, but, you know. Quick question. So, she she runs out of the house, right? Yeah. And is running down the street, and then it just randomly cuts that security camera footage? Yeah, which is ch- check off security camera footage. I know I know that that does come back, but what purpose does that shot serve? I guess it's just sh- so it's not a surprise later on when they show it that she's going crazy, but it also doesn't show anything. It just shows her running. Like, uh, yeah, that's 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 one of my small nitpicks. I'm like, yeah. that's a weird shot. Like, I don't. Yeah, it wouldn't prove anything other than she went running at night. Yeah, it's like, I, OK, I don't know. Speaking of nitpicky, here's here's a question I have. One of the bigger ones, uh, one of the bigger ones I have with this movie is so sh- this is where she goes back to the the brother and says i know he's found a way to turn himself invisible blah 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 this guy is known to be like uber rich he's like the head of a tech company he's he's like the you know an elon musk or a mark zuckerberg or something like that one of these silicon valley douchebags and he's clearly prolific and rich and he fakes a suicide and then supposedly gets cremated but i feel like because he's so prolific that there would need to be a body that people see and i know they show photos of that body but then how does that work like obviously that urn is probably empty and if anything they probably just like paid some people off i guess to like keep quiet or like well there is a body but we're not going to do anything with it right like i don't I, it, it just feels weird to me that like that doesn't add up right uh i mean i feel like the urns i feel like there probably is ash in that urn right but not his obviously yeah, obviously so if that but if that's the case then that means adrian or tom had to like pay off the guy at the crematorium and probably other people to be like hey just put someone else's ashes in here or something i don't I, it just it feels weird like somebody that rich people are going to want to know like all the detail like tmz is going to be at his house the second like maybe <laughs> that the story breaks maybe i don't know i th- i thought that was kind of weird and then well then we get the we get the lift driver who just <laughs> minds his own business mm-hmm. 
casually taking his time too this guy has no sense of urgency <laughs> like this this woman is like pleading for her life like calling her sister like oh my god he's coming for me i think i'm gonna die and he's just like driving yeah he's putting on easy listening he's reversing yeah. in the middle of the road even though he doesn't need to <laughs> yeah i was like why are you doing a three-point turn right now <laughs> like, i know i know in the middle of this intersection <laughs> what is happening and uh yeah he's like oh that's a very far way to drive and i'm like Dude, that's a good thing for you. You get you get you're getting some money right now. Like, don't worry. About I know, it. but he's just so like just minding his business. Mm -hmm. He's like, nope, not getting. He's like, this bitch sound crazy. Not yeah. getting involved. Speaking of which, I I uh, I'm at, I am coming. I'm flying out to LA soon, and I was looking at. I I want to get an Uber from where I live to Tampa Airport, so I can just like, and it's a 45 minute ride. Oh no! And it's like 70 bucks, right, to do that in LA. That's like taking me from like Burbank to Glendale. It's like 70 bucks is the same <laughs> exact thing. Oh and yeah, no, that's not getting you far here. I know, and I was like, Jesus. Christ. I was like that. That guy's gonna make some fucking dough, and it's I don't know. I, that, are you are you are you flying into LAX or Burbank? Oh, LAX, one hundred percent. Oh, you're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever flown in or out of Burbank. It's always been LAX. What's your what? Are you, what are your thoughts on the design of the suit? Because when she goes and explores the house, we actually get to see what the suit looks like. I think it's a pretty cool idea. I it's mean, not it's not bad. It's just a wetsuit with cameras on it, yeah. which I'm all about. It's not bad. Yeah, it, it it looks like a goth honeycomb. Yep. Yeah, it sure does. I guess my question would be like the the feet portion of it because like obviously you can't put cameras on the bottom because you would break them probably by walking or running but like if that's the case and every time you lift your foot then you can see the bottom of your foot i guess i don't know i, I don't know i mean he he made an invisibility suit yeah he figured out he Fair figured enough. out how to make durable camera lenses like here's my real question with this suit do you think he how do you go to the bathroom well that's a good point too where's that where's that invisible zipper yeah that, that that's my biggest issue with the suit i'm like yeah. where's the zipper do you think that he made the suit and then just had it. And when he found that she escaped and she had the diazepam and everything, he decided to use that for this whole plot. Or do you think he made that suit specifically for this reason? Like in the two weeks that he was, you know, she was, uh, she had escaped from him before he quote unquote committed suicide. I think he was already working on the suit mm -hmm. and then was like, oh, opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the same too. Like, it's like almost like uh, he had a military contract to develop some kind of ca active camouflage exactly yeah 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 yeah. exactly speaking of uh nitpicks of this movie too by the way uh they left this fucking dog in this abandoned house what the i fuck? know and he is just the goodest boy <laughs> yeah he just walks right in like hey what's up like when she when 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 she runs it like when the invisible man shows up and she's like you know in the closet and she like runs past him and he grabs her throws her mm -hmm. and then the dog's like uh fucking excuse me mm-hmm Mm -hmm. I'll bark at you, son of a bitch. Yeah, I, I like he only barks at him when he gets there. Like, he hears that the dog is downstairs. He hears them come through the, the front door. When she walks in, nothing. He, he comes in way later after she's already in the No, house. that dog is the goodest boy. Yeah, and this, this shot of her looking out over the ocean, like, in this empty room, man... Like, not for nothing, this house is gorgeous. Like, I know that's a duh, but like, holy shit. I mean, I don't know. It's like, it's like the house in 13 Ghosts. Like, <laughs> oh, it's all, it's, don't even come at me with this shit. Don't I even, fucking, I know what you're, it's, no. it's all windows. <laughs> Fuck that. It's, it's all glass, all Fuck windows. That. It's hell it, no. Logically, it makes no sense at all, but whatever. No, no, it's not that. I just don't want to live in that kind of house. Sure. Give, I need, I need, give me a wall. Yeah. Please. Sure. <laughs> no, I don't want all glass walls. I'll give you that. Especially because it's going to be hot as fuck in there. Even with an AC. Oh, your bill. my God. <sighs> if, like, fuck. Oh, hell no. West facing. Mm -hmm. Get the fuck. I had one. I had when I lived in Atlanta, my last apartment one. So it was all like I live in, in like a concrete, like loft mm -hmm. style apartment. Mm -hmm. So it was one big concrete room. And then one wall was all windows oh. and it was West facing. It was gorgeous. But oh my God, around like 1 p.m., yep. I had to close all my windows. See, what you want is a, a all glass window that's got shutters that you can just pull down. Like almost like blast shutters. Like well, as <laughs> as long as you're not east or west, like you you want like like south facing windows. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. No, I I would love a house like that, like with the glass walls. But yeah, I want to be able to either have walls east or west that are solid, or shutters that I can like. Let's just close that right there and not worry 
about oh, it. Oh, yeah. You don't see a single... There ain't a single curtain in that fucking nope. house. No blinds, no curtains. It's just glass. Well, and I'm also, like, the kind of person, like, I don't... Like, I, I shut my blinds at night. Mm-hmm. Same. Like, that... So, like, something... Like, that freaks me out. And, like, no, nah, these motherfuckers just sleeping with the windows open. Oh, it's, it's less freaking me out that the blinds are open at night and more so of, I don't want any light source in my house at night. Like, that I want it to be too. pitch black like the blackest of blackout curtains and no street lights no moonlight i oh, want yeah. nothing shining in. oh i when i was when i was like 18 19 i worked third shift at walmart mm-hmm. and you know because i was a broke 18 year old i couldn't afford blackout curtains mm-hmm. so i just i had a black comforter so yep. i just nailed that to the wall yep it it worked i mean that's what you do when you're teens and 20s it worked yeah yeah it's not aesthetically pleasing but it'll get the job done so after this we get we get to the uh the restaurant scene with oh, the sister man which oh. re- real quick <laughs> i usually hate the intrusive waiter trope yep but i think it's fucking hilarious in this movie <laughs> uh, this guy this guy is spot on with these pretentious restaurants like do you know how this place works? And I love her response of, yeah, we order food and we eat it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we do things a little differently. I'm, I get fucked. If you have one of those <laughs> restaurants, get fucked. <laughs> uh, it's so spot on. This, um, this death though. Oh my God. It's, 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 it's the biggest what the fuck moment of the movie. Yeah. Oh, it, it is jaw dropping because it is so quick, so unexpected. And it's just out of left field. And it's, it, it takes this movie and puts it in a whole nother gear. Like the fact that he cuts the sister's throat, puts it in the knife in her hand. And Moss is so stunned. Of course, she, she claps down on it. Oh my God. Moss's performance too, of just like the shock, the confusion, and then like the understanding all, you see all that on her face. It's incredible. Well, and like, I know a lot of people, like I saw this with two of my friends in theaters and they weren't big fans Mm -hmm. and they were like, that scene makes no sense. Why would she hold the knife? I'm like, that. That's kind of like if someone shoves something into your hand, your natural instinct yes. is to like grasp it. Yeah. Class down on it. Yeah. Yeah. God. I, I mean, Ma- Elizabeth Moss may be one of the best actors we have right now. <laughs> she's incredible. Yeah, no, no, she's, she's fantastic. Again, just also part of a cult. Yeah. And that's the one blight on that. I, I, we forgot to talk about one other thing, too. What's that? A part I'm sure you really enjoyed. Uh, Adria cold clocks a fucking teenager. Oh, that's <laughs> right. In the movie. Yeah. And yeah. Storm Reed thinks that's another part, too. I'm like, ah, I go back and forth on it because I'm like, obviously, Elizabeth Moss didn't punch you, girl. Like, you, there's no way she could have. But, I mean, in that situation, that is the only. Yes, that's my butt. Explanation. I agree. Like, you're you're going to get, you're going to assume the person in the room with you. If you and one other person are in a room, you get fucking just clocked in the face. I know. Your first assumption is that, oh, it was that motherfucker in the room with me. Right. But I'm just like, she's like three feet away. From her. I, I go back and forth on it. I'm like, yes. Logically, that would be the first thing you, you, the, the conclusion you jump to. But I'm like, logistically, like, th- it doesn't add up. And he, you could hear the punch. He cold clocks this girl in the fucking Oh face. my God. Yeah. He, he brings the, again, motherfucker strong when the movie calls for yes, it. Yes. I think she has a broken nose there too, because there's blood at least. So oh, she has to. Oof. And so, yeah, Elizabeth Moss goes to this asylum. Dude, that. The scene of her getting restrained is hard to watch. Oh, Holy shit. Hard to watch. And what a button on the end of it. Because up until this point, most of it can be explained away. Other than the floating knife at the restaurant. Like, you know it's Adrian, obviously. You know it's the Invisible Man. But, like, for her to have that moment where she's in the room, she's been doped up, she's locked away. And for him to just drop the surprise... God damn, that is bone chilling. Yeah. Like that is so hard. Hardest line in the movie. This is another part where the logistics don't make sense to me. I'm like, okay, so he's in the room with her. So he is just in that room until someone opens the door next. Like, yeah, that's that's my thing. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Um so what if he's gotta take a shit? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like what happens? Cause like I I feel like she's they don't let her out of that room very often. No, and it's got to be at least till the next day before. Like, does he pack some snacks in that suit, or like, what's going on? Got like, got like a got packing a granola bar. Uh-huh. Some bitch. What's up? Oh, then they're gonna find it. They're gonna find like if he's got one of those like uh, Nature Valley bars. There's gonna be like crumbs all on the oh, fucking crumbs bar. everywhere. Because that sh- it's uh, it's like oh, you you that's how he gets you, caught crumbs on the suit. Like you you <laughs> unwrap it and it's like eating sand mm-hmm. and just everywhere instantly. So this 
this next scene where she meets with Tom, the brother, mm-hmm. they make a reference to Jellyfish. She's mm-hmm. like, oh, you're just the Jellyfish version of him, which, again, back to the show Patriot, I wonder if it's a reference because Jellyfish play a massive role in season two of that show. Mm-hmm. And I want, I wonder if that's a reference to that show. I think he's got a Jellyfish t-shirt or something on. Maybe. I think so. I, I think you're right. There, there's some kind of callback to that. It is like if I don't know if like it might have just been like coincidence that they cast Michael Dorman, but mm-hmm. also it's like that's a big coincidence because Jellyfish play a huge role in that show. For sure. The scene, though, before that, when uh, Aldous Hodge and the other detective are there interviewing her and they're showing her the security cam footage and all that good stuff. I, I It just brings up the point, too. I'm like, it's a good thing because he's in the room with her. It's a good thing that he's never got a sneeze or, yeah. <laughs> or he's never got a fart or anything. Cause like, <laughs> But again, that's one. It's like, is he in the room? That's we don't true. know. We we don't hear the camera clicks in that scene. It almost would be better if he wasn't. And he, she's just like whispering and looking in the corner and everything. See, that's that's actually one of the scenes where I don't think he's there. That would be really cool. I do think that's just her. Because once they introduce the invisible man, we do hear the camera click almost every time good point and that scene we don't i i do like though when she is getting doped up and she's just screaming i see you i see you yeah. and like we don't see him we don't know he's there for sure yeah and then the surprise is, and then the surprise right yeah it's so good yeah then she takes this pen boy the pen and then the sticky tack stuff from the table Ooh. it's it's so, and then this is where we get revealed too that Tom, yeah, is in on it because he's like, oh, well, just you keep the baby because we find out she's pregnant too. That Dude, oh man, her reaction Oof. when she finds, holy shit, yes. So she was taking birth control pills because she didn't want to have a baby with him because he said that was one way that he knew that she could never leave him is there was a baby involved. She'd always be tied to him. And he apparently found out about it and swapped him out uh, the uh, birth control pills with probably placebos. Yep. And now she's pregnant. And so Tom says, you know, leans in close and says, well, if you keep the baby, we can get you out of here because right now you're wanted for murder. Like you were going to be charged with murder because of uh, the sister in the restaurant. So she takes this guy's pen and this plan, it's ballsy because I don't know if I have the balls to do this, <laughs> but she takes this pen, she hides it in the in her room and then she goes in the shower. She takes the pen and she's basically faking like she's going to commit suicide by cutting her wrist and doing it the quote unquote right way yep. the, the down the street, not across the road. Sideways for attention, baby. Yep. She Adrian stops her. She goes to town on him with this pen, and it's awesome. Oh <laughs> like, yeah, the suit glitching, the blood squirting. It's it's fucking great. Going to town with that ballpoint. Yeah, this is this is the scene. I was like, good for her. Like yep. this is why she needs to be in that category now. And then he goes on a fucking rampage. Ugh. We go full upgrade here because this asylum fight. Oh my god. I will say <laughs> the actor for the cop that like like when he's like. Stay down, Cecilia, stay down, stay yeah. down. And then like the gun, like he gets the gun take and gets shot in the leg, then knocked out. Oh my God. W- w- worst actor in this movie. You think so? <laughs> he's he's almost like, he's almost like grinning during the entire mm-hmm. sequence. Like he can't, like he's just so happy to be like in a movie <laughs> on a big movie set. Like he's literally trying not to crack a smile when he's like, stay down, Cecilia. <laughs> yeah. He's like making the the bang bang sounds with his gun, just so. Like, yeah, but then <laughs> these guards get fucking rocked. <laughs> <laughs> it's like people in Star Wars when they get lightsabers and they make the whooshing sounds on camera. And they have to be told to stop. Can't fucking blame him. I'd do the same shit. Are you kidding me? Same thing. No, this this gunshot to the knee is incredible. Oh, it's fucking awesome. Fuck that. <laughs> but this this whole scene is like a video game because it's like, oh, you defeated one wave of enemies. Well, here's another. Like, <laughs> they just keep coming in waves. And then yeah, the the camera work here of like the guy getting his head slammed into the glass and everything. It's it's tremendous. But do you think uh, all these people are dead? Because I think the only one that's uh, got to be official is the guy with a floating gun uh, that gets shot in the back. But all the other people just kind of get knocked out. Yeah, we we don't really see where he gets shot, but. Yeah. I'd say he's probably the most... He's dead Likely dead, yeah. Yeah. A floating gun could be a villain in a movie. (laughs) What? Like, not (laughs) not an invisible man holding a gun, just a a floating gun, and that's the villain of your movie. Like, a low-budget... You're getting into idle hands territory now. Yeah, I just want, like, a (laughs) low-budget 80s movie where, like, the gun is the villain. Like, (laughs) that would be such a fun, campy idea to do. I'd watch it. Right? It's It's Christine, but it's just a floating gun. It's just a gun. Nobody's holding it. It's just a gun. <laughs> I'd watch it. Yeah. 
It's like rubber. It's like the movie Rubber, but instead of a tire, it's a guy. Oh, I thought you were talking about Flubber. <laughs> oh, no, no. No. Oh, Flubber meets Rubber. That's the Freddy versus Jason matchup oh, I could see. Oh, God. And then the, you bring the floating gun in as like the third act uh, like twist. <laughs> so it's like Godzilla versus Kong, mm-hmm. and then the floating gun is Mecha Godzilla. Oh, my God. I, hold on. I got to go. I got to go write the script. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, fuck. Then we get the, uh, the parking lot scene, Mm -hmm. which is fine, I guess. Yeah. Um, This, this is, this scene, this sequence kind of falls apart. I don't love this. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little weird. Like, why is he still there? Just, just get out of there. Like, why? (laughs) Obviously she escaped. You're dead. You've been stabbed multiple times. Your suit's glitching. Just get out of there. Like, there's no reason to stick around. Like, it would almost be better if, like, she was trying to hide and, like, look under cars and stuff. And it turns out he's just gone. Like, he left. Yeah. Um, although we do get the guy like who gets he like cra- like he swerves to miss the car and then crashes and gets out mm-hmm. of the car. And just, oh, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Oh, and then Adrian gets her like chokes her and says that like, oh, I was, you know, going to play nice. But now that you've decided to fight back, I'm going to go kill that that little girl that I punched earlier. And it, it just made me think of like, man, this movie does the sociopath who learned how to turn invisible and how scary that would be plot. So much better than Hollow Man did, right? Oh, right. Because that movie, he kind of goes like, as soon as he's invisible, he's like, time to go full rape mode. Like, it's not, it's not great. Yeah. Yeah. No. (laughs) Oh, fuck. Yeah. Kind of forgot about Hollow Man for a second there. Right? I kind of want to revisit it just because it is a Paul Verhoeven movie and it's Kevin Bacon. And I'm like, I know it's not a great movie, but that's just a winning combination. I got to revisit. (laughs) In in a way. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I love that uh, Storm Reed's character here is smart enough to sense the invisible guy in the room and pepper sprays him. Oh, my God. It's so fucking funny, too. It's so great. Like the camera whipping. <laughs> Which I got to say, it's a really shitty mask. If right. The, all the peppers. If that pepper spray gets through that easily. Right. But like, it's it's so funny because like the camera whips to the side and he like bumbles into the. Cabin. And it, it just like the little like ah, fuck yeah, noise yeah. he makes. <laughs> Good girl. Very smart. I like that. But then immediately just fucking slams her down in the hallway. God, so, so many people getting clothesline and like gripped by the back of their hair and slammed to the floor. This girl does a dive. And I love how like James is like just big hulking six foot fucking brick shit house. Mm-hmm. Gets the ever leading shit beat out of him. I guess <laughs> I guess that's the question too. Like obviously he can't see him, but he knows there's a guy there. Just start blasting, dude. Like <laughs> Well, his daughter's literally right in front of well, him. Well, she's on the floor. Just aim high. Like um, sh- <laughs> well, I that or like when when he like punches him the first time, I would just start kicking. Like I just start wild round, roundhouse kicking. <laughs> Or I'd get on my back on the floor and just start bicycle kicking as hard as like, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think he's in fucking shock because he's just like, too. what the fuck? Just, it, it's because, again, he doesn't believe or like he doesn't know or believe there's an invisible person. True. So he's just like, fuck, oh, what the shit? He, he, not for nothing, too. Like the Elizabeth Moss fight earlier between the invisible man and her in the kitchen is great. He does some great like everybody that has to get fucked up by the invisible man is pr- it's pretty fucking good performance. Like. Him getting the shit beat out of him and the blood splurting out of his mouth and everything, it looks, again, it should look goofy because there's nothing there, but it looks really fucking good. Like, yeah. brav fucking O with this. This would be a nightmare of a movie for me to, like, block and, like, plan. <laughs> like, this, I don't know if I could do that. that it's... It's impressive. It's impressive. Now, one one of my critiques, I do kind of wish the final fight lasted just like 30 seconds longer. Like she just- about this fight right here? Well, when like Elizabeth Moss just comes in, pops him four times and it's done. I kind of like it because like he hasn't been shot at this point. He gets shot and it takes a second and it's like, oh, maybe the suit's bulletproof or something. Or maybe she didn't get him, you know? But like- when you see those four holes in his chest and he just collapses, you're like, oh, this dude's fucking... And I like... I would agree with you if it wasn't Tom. Like, if it was Adrian, obviously, I would want a bigger showdown. But I kind of like that it's like, oh, I finally got him. I got the upper hand. What? It's the brother? Like, it's a good... It's a good twist. It's a good moment. I just I just want, like, maybe, like, she runs it. Maybe has to look for him okay. for a second. I can, I can feel you on that. But she just, run, she just runs in, pops him four times, and it's over. Got it. Uh, maybe it's something like there was something... I don't know, like like he's hiding, but like he notices her and then he, he she pops him. That'd yeah. be pretty cool, yeah, I guess. But uh, uh, yeah, she puts four whole fault fucking holes in this guy. Uh, it's so good. But then, yeah, the reveal of it being Tom, you're just like, oh. Yes. Oh, fuck. Did oh. you, on the first watch, buy the Adrian was kidnapped? Because I didn't either. No, like, right not away. at all. Not at no. all. I wonder if that would have worked if 
they didn't show him like trying to like punt like when he punches the door out at the beginning and everything like punches the window out. And, and i don't think it's supposed to be that you believe it but yeah, i don't think you're supposed to like i think you're supposed to know like oh this motherfucker pulled one over on her again yes. like but i wonder if it would work if they made it where like you don't actually see anything adrian did and it kind of solidifies the the believe all women part when you get to the end maybe like i wonder if that would work i mean i guess it's kind of the brilliance of the movie it, i could see it working both ways and I, I'm okay with this way being the win they went with. Hang on, let's let's walk through this real quick. So okay. it's obviously Adrian at the hospital. Yeah. And then Tom's at the house. So like Adrian leaves the hospital, calls Tom, he's like, you know, go to the fucking house. Yes. Yes. And then Adrian supposedly goes home to do the whole fake kidnapping bit, right? Yes. What was the plan if the brother didn't die? Hmm. Well, the brother was supposed to go there to kill the daughter. I guess the brother was supposed to have come back and they were just keep tormenting her, right? Well, I I guess that's the thing. Did he plan to do the, oh, I've been kidnapped bit before he knew Tom was dead? Or he was just like, let's scapegoat this. But also, but how does he know Tom died? Uh, I mean, I'm sure the suits have some kind of like uh, communication thing into it. It has to, right? I mean, maybe like a tracker, but does well, that- What we could have used is like a Iron Man inside the suit HUD. Oh, he's, God. He's able that, to watch. That's, that's, the, that's like, let's write the bad <laughs> version of this movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, I, I'm sure there's, it's, he's a technical genius, right? I'm sure there was some way where he could like watch what Tom was seeing. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. The, the bigger question for me is, did he, did Adrian plan on Aldous Hodge showing up and shooting him or, or whoever? Like, did he plan Tom to die there? Or was he like, well, if Tom dies going there, I'll do this fake plan. If Tom lives, then I'll just do the fake plan until I get confirmation he's still alive and then I don't have to worry about it. And we can just keep going on tormenting Elizabeth Moss or Yeah, who knows? It's a mystery. I, I think I'd like to think he kind of rolled with the punches and that just doubles down on how much of a sociopath this dude is. Yeah. Uh should should we get into the ending? Yeah, go ahead and, and recap it. Yeah. We have we have arrived. So everything gets pinned on Tom, mm-hmm. like that he kidnapped Adrian and was doing it all as Elizabeth Mock clearly doesn't believe him. I love that she doesn't believe him too, by the way. Oh yeah, of course. If she can't believe him. She sets up a little rendezvous mm-hmm. to go meet with him, mm-hmm. which also, so she just got off the whole wanted for her sister's murder thing? I guess so. that's why I think the people at the asylum didn't die because they were all like, no, no, she's telling the truth. She- Aldous Hodge does say we have witnesses at the hospital that- yeah. It's all weird shit. So, okay. I buy into that. I mean, I guess you can't, you can't hold her for anything else, right? So, I, I love the idea of this dinner scene, mm-hmm. but logistically, it doesn't make sense for me. Okay, so what's, what's your problem with this scene? So, okay, first off, this dude has been shown to have massive amounts of strength the whole movie. Like, yep. at one point, he is picking her up by the neck and also holding her arm back with the knife. So, yep. he's doing that one-handed. He throws her across a room. Oh, he, that, she goes gliding across that table. <laughs> he punches through a window. Mm-hmm. He beats the fuck out of these armed guards. Mm-hmm. But then she overpowers him. So here's the thing. One theory time. Do you think, because I don't think we ever see the back of his neck. Do you think he's got the same upgrade that <laughs> Logan Marshall Green has from upgrade? And oh my God. That would explain it. Or how does it explain her overpowering so him? So here's the thing. I don't think she overpowers him. I think she just catches him off guard by surprise. And similar to how she grasps down on the knife in the restaurant, because it's a pretty quick scene. Like if you go back and watch, she, you know, he's got the knife in his hand. He, he, she lifts his arm up and then cuts his throat like there's very short there's a very short window of him struggling against her i I don't know i don't know dude and it also could be it also could be a thing of like with the momentum of him trying to take his hand away from his throat and the knife that she kind of lets go and he does it to himself a little bit maybe okay but then also that's just one note on this final scene okay so she does the whole like, oh my god, nine one one, help me, help me, help me, and then yeah. she like steps off camera for the reveal. Yeah, but are you telling me that this dude doesn't have a thousand more security cameras yeah. in this house? I thought about that on the rewatch. Yeah, and then James running in is the most suspicious thing. Yeah, like he's definitely on camera. Yeah, like you, you know they have cameras outside the house. So well, the fake the the whole. Like him being there kind of throws a wrench in the whole fake yeah, suicide thing. I agree. I agree. And then 
She leaves the scene of the crime. Yeah. She calls in the suicide attempt from her phone and then leaves. Like they and then J- James is James is a cop. Yeah. He knows that her leaving it like that's not gonna work like yeah. she's not it's not gonna be like oh yep so she called it in and then left this is definitely a suicide no but because th- then they're also like so yeah she was here she walked out he killed himself she called 911 and then left yeah and then her friend who's a cop just happened to show up yeah yeah it's- no this is this is a clear-cut suicide no it isn't it would have played better if she like excused herself to the bathroom, came back and was like, I I can't be here, blah, 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 and left. And then, you know, she she got back in the house, got the suit, and he was like still sitting at the table, like thinking about it or whatever, and killed himself. But I guess she couldn't take that risk because she knows the dude is controlling. I, I agree with you. Her leaving and Al just Hodge running in, like it definitely puts a foil on the whole plan. The part that's more concerning to me is, yeah, her stepping out of frame of the camera and then having her gloating moments. Like, A, even if there's not another camera there, that's going to look suspicious regardless on camera. Like, you called on 911 and then the second you hung up, it's dead silence from you. Like, I don't know. And But the, the bigger thing is, yeah, there probably is another camera there. I mean, I expect her to be knowledgeable enough about this house to know where the cameras are. But even still, like... <laughs> The biggest issue besides fucking James running in is she just leaves the scene of the crime. Well, here's the thing. They're going to arrest her immediately. Do you think because I don't know. I I don't think I don't think she cares. I think she doesn't care if she's caught. She got But but but, but we don't know like they they don't play it like that. Yeah, you're right. I, I I'm just trying to make it work. They play it they play it like yay, she won. No, I, I, <laughs> she's going to jail. I don't know. I mean, I yes, there was an invisible suit that they have come to find out, but like, I don't know. It's tough. Well, and see, that's the other thing. They have they have an invisible suit. Yeah, in evidence, <laughs> it's tough. It's a tough. I don't think it's. A, I I don't know. I feel like yes, it is Lee Winnell trying to be like she got away with it, but it logistically doesn't make sense for my head I don't. I don't think she cares that she's gonna get caught. If she does get caught, that she will get caught. That's and see, that's that's what keeps this movie from being so good for me. Is just this final scene. Like I love the idea of it. Yeah. But it just logistically, like they, it feel like for how well done the rest of the movie is. Yeah. This final scene just feels a little lazy. Okay. Let me play devil's advocate here for a little bit. Okay, so... Don't side with Adrian. No, 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 no. By law... Oh, God. By law, she still gets his money because even if he's not dead, like she already has it and he's dead now... His will probably didn't change between now and then, so she still gets that $5 million, whatever. If she gets caught for this, she can afford probably the best attorney she can, like, you can get. And do you really want to be on the jury of this case being like, nah, she... She definitely killed that guy. She deserves to go to jail. Like this woman who's been through all this shit. I don't- but dude, there, <laughs> there, there's, there's going to be such a big, cause it's, I wouldn't want to be on that jury is all I'm saying. <laughs> when, when it's a scenario like that, where like, she's going to inherit, like she was there <sighs> when it happened. Like there's going to be such a big investigation into that. Cause that is so like her, like the person that inherits the fortune sure, being sure. there when they commit suicide, like that's a massive red flag. But she had already inherited it. And I doubt he asked her, I doubt he asked her to give it back. Well that that's the thing. He wasn't actually dead, yeah. so it would be null and void. That's what I'm saying. Now now he is and But the- again, but now she's present when he dies that's incredibly suspicious it's suspicious it's suspicious but i guess here's the thing with the camera footage and james was there that that part is it doesn't look great but it's got to be with on a shot beyond a shadow of a doubt like you the burden of proof is on the state you don't have her on camera killing him you have on camera a knife going into that dude's throat like unless you can prove she was the one doing it which you physically won't be able to even if you have the suit you can't prove she was in the suit and did that. Like it's 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 gonna be a long trial. Is all I'm saying. It's it's gonna be a long trial. Like the gray, the areas of gray here are astronomical. And like I said, I don't think she cares. We need we need an episode of Law and Order to follow this one well, up. Just like a, a sequel that's just a courtroom drama. Yes, like, yes, please. I'd be in. Like let's let's get fucking Benson and Stabler on this. Oh my bitch. god! Like they dun, they dun. have talked about making a sequel. Uh, uh, Lee Winnell and Elizabeth Moss. They've said yeah, if if Lee wants to do it, I'll do it. And he said as of like 20, 
uh, 20 or 2021. I can't remember. I was reading the article. It said he's interested in doing it and he's working on it, but he doesn't really know if it's going to be a direct sequel or whatever. But hey, I don't. What would I don't know what and unless it is literally a courtroom drama, and I'd be in for that. I don't <laughs> know what the fucking sequel would be. So here's here's the thing about this ending for me. My, my notes uh, as we arrived at this ending, I just wrote, "Man, steak." pasta and sushi all at my fingertips i'm so hungry oh my body hates me after this meal but holy shit (laughs) i actually uh some friends of mine got engaged last week so we took them out for a celebratory dinner the other night Mm -hmm. and it was one of those meals like it was one of those like places where like you just pay like a set amount and Mm -hmm. you get like four courses Mm -hmm. and i'm i'm one of those dudes where i'm like you know i'll do like an appetizer and a main course i don't usually do dessert yeah because i'm like i don't need that much food but this was like you you paid for four courses so fuck it i'm gonna eat it oh my god i felt terrible the rest of the but like in a good way like i was so full yeah but i felt terrible I, are you saying it's one of those places that do things a little bit differently <laughs> oh god yeah yeah well it, i ordered and then i ate it but also it's like pasta and steak cool that's not a bad combo Ah, uh, sushi? The sushi and pasta combination is bad. Yeah, that's not, like, I don't want, I don't want. Steak and sushi's not that bad. Yeah, but, yeah, like, is it, like, what's the, like, is it a, like, are we talking, like, is it a cream sauce on the mm. pasta? Because I don't want a cream sauce and raw fish. Not a red sauce either. Like, it's got to be, like, just oil or something. Just, just dry pasta. Yeah, just, just butter noodles. <laughs> just buttered noodles. <laughs> this dude's a billionaire and all he can get is butter noodles. <laughs> butter noodles and sushi. Uh, uh. Ugh. Which I do, I do, I love in that scene where like they like they're like, all right, steak it is. Mm-hmm. There's just steak on their plate. Yeah, no, no sides. <laughs> neither of neither of them reached for a side. Yep, like it's just it's just steak on a plate. But, butter noodles and sushi is, I think, the name of the next Limp Biscuit album. But um, <laughs> I do like that her choosing steak <laughs> makes sense for because the knife. Because she gets the knife, yeah. Because you won't have a knife like that for sushi and, and pasta, so that, that was, that's pretty smart on her part. I don't know. I did, a while back, I did see someone eat pasta with a knife, and I was like, what, what the, the fuck? fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, fork, like, fork and a spoon? Yeah. I get. Yeah. I, I'm not a, like, I just rock a fork. I don't usually use the spoon. I don't use the spoon either. Sorry to all of our diehard Italian listeners. I don't use a spoon. Yeah, sorry. I just use the fork. I just use the fork. Um, I'm a monster. <laughs> but yeah, I saw someone literally like cutting their pasta up. I was like, what? And like, I was like, are they feeding a child? No, they're 40. <laughs> what are you doing? What if, what if, um, what if the pasta was butter noodles, but they'd like, she looked to the left of the steak, which is like steakums and the sushi was just like, I don't know, nigiri. Like it was the most plain sushi you could get. Yeah. Like what's, uh, what, yeah. What's, what's the poor version of this? So it's like buttered noodles. Mm-hmm. The steakums for uh, the steak. It's gotta be just a hamburger patty or fl- or, or flank steak. Just like, no, nah, no, nah, dude, dude, this, this is like it's a hamburger patty no okay. cheese no but it's just a hamburger patty gotcha. with a side of ketchup Ugh, the sushi and then what's what's the sushi yeah is it just like uh, like a gas station california roll oh my god oh i'm already throwing up oh like the, yeah like the little like pre-packaged sushi you can get at some gas stations which oh, is disgusting no. the wawa sushi uh, yep yeah, that's exactly what i'm thinking of i'm yep. pretty sure futurama did a whole episode on this we both lived in florida we know <laughs> <laughs> Wawa sushi, baby. How, how do you feel about? Oh. How do you feel about the? Uh, this episode has just turned into like poor person, like gourmet food. <laughs> how, how do you feel about the uh, the zinger here at the end with him saying that shouldn't come as much of a dot 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 surprise? Does it work for you? It's literally Paul Rudd and walk hard. There's no <laughs> limit to what you can imagine imagine (laughs) like if he looked at the camera and winked right there yeah i'd shit myself i i don't think it's too over the top or theatrical like it is and like the final like like she does the surprise too which i don't mind it's not a speech it's not a you know uh, eat this motherfucker line or whatever it's not like those hard detective lines of like action movies right it's just a surprise like i think it worked pretty well it would have worked better if she had just been like, yippee ki motherfucker. <laughs> just whispered, y- yippee ki motherfucker. That would have been so <laughs> much better. Yeah, it's not bad. The uh, the last note I have for the movie is, you know, Lee Winnell has directed three movies to date and written those movies as well. That's uh, Insidious 3. Wait, so this 3. upgrade? Okay, that's what I thought. I haven't seen Insidious 3. Eh. It's okay? It's not my favorite. Well, that's what I was going to say. He's done at least two great movies out of three. Does that like... 
does that make him a great director now or like are we would we be excited for the next thing he's gonna do oh no i i want to like if he has another movie coming out i'll see it can i tell you what he's supposed to be doing next oh no <laughs> freddy versus jason 2 <laughs> i'll tell you it's a remake oh, he's doing a remake of freddy versus jason <laughs> it is a remake he's doing of a very beloved movie okay hang on let me let me keep guessing let me keep guessing um alien uh no but you're kind of in the right area <gasps> um kind of. terminator even closer it's a very no fuck that was up that was upgrade no it's a very beloved action movie from the 80s commando nope but you're Fuck. you're kind of close to it honestly i'm kind of surprised if it, it now that i know it's not commando i don't care <laughs> what if i said it was cobra <laughs> <gasps> No, it's not Cobra. He's supposed to be directing a remake of Escape from New York. Uh, oh. And I'm kind of in on that idea. I think that... And if they got uh, Kurt Russell's son... Oh, uh, Wyatt Russell? I would kind of be in on that. <laughs> dude, Wyatt Russell's fucking great. Oh, he's great. He's so good. That dude's so good. I would be in on this. I, I don't know who you get to play the Donna Pleasance role, but... Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> uh, earlier this year... I watched um, Under the Banner of Heaven, mm -hmm. that FX show about the yeah. m murders in the Mormon community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, Wyatt Russell in that whole fucking terrifying. I didn't watch that, but Priscilla watched it. It's great. All right. I, I was a big fan of the book. Mm -hmm. Um, and dude, it's, it's like a fucking just, it's like a fucking Emmy reel for Andrew Garfield, Got honestly. It. Got it. It's so good. But Wyatt Russell is terrifying in that show. I liked Wyatt Russell in uh, Black Mirror. Yeah, he's good. He's, he's fantastic in 22 Jump Street. Mm hmm. And I didn't see the show, but I know I've seen his scenes, some of his scenes from uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. And I like yeah, that. Yeah, he's good in that. He's good in that. I think he could, I think that'd be fun to see him play Snake Plissken and like what if you even made Kurt Russell the Donald Pleasant role <laughs> or something weird like that That'd I don't know about that <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I would watch this movie I, I'm kind of in on it I hope it happens it's been here or there dis discussions about it but it's on his IMDB is in it, it, you know his next thing I didn't love the movie but he was good in it uh, Woman in the Window that Netflix movie uh, I didn't see it the Amy Adams thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I didn't see that. I, I didn't love the movie, but he was good. No, I, I like Lee Winnell. I, I liked Saw. I think he's a good, a pretty good writer. He's not a great actor, but that's okay. Because he's... He also directs really well. So if you can write and direct and you're good at both of those, then I'm all, I'm all here for it. Oh, yeah, there is that upgrade TV show that they're trying to make. I don't, I don't know about that. We'll see, I guess. Wait, what? Yeah, they're trying to make upgrade a TV show. I, I don't know. Oh, looks like he's not writing... The Escape from New York remake. No, I think he's just in talks to direct it. The guy who wrote... So he did that remake of the Mosquito Coast, that Apple show? Yes, with Justin Theroux, yeah. Yeah, which I watched one episode. It was fine. It looks like... Oh, okay, it's the guy who created Luther, and he also wrote Mama. Mama is fine, I guess. Yeah, it's not... It's, yeah, it's okay. Again, third act kind of falls apart. Yeah. Anyway, um, so, Dustin. Yeah. Would you recommend The Invisible Man? I... One, one million percent. <laughs> yeah, it's no, it's fun. It's a fun watch. I know it came out in 2020, but it's already like one of the best horror movies of the decade. Like it, it's it's also one of the best Blumhouse movies. I don't I don't know if I would call this a horror movie. Oh, OK. So you want to call it this a thriller? I just. Yeah. Okay. Thriller, drama, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. It doesn't go. Hor it doesn't go into the horror vibes enough for me. Fair enough. Not in a bad way. Like, I think it's a great thriller. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, I I think it's inc for a seven million dollar movie and it, to gross as much as it did. Oh yeah, no. When that was the biggest shock for me when you said it was only a seven million dollar budget. Insane. Like that's fantastic. And every portion of this movie, like I said earlier, it's it's operating at the peak of its game. Like except for the final scene. Yeah, well, I meant like the camera work, the stunt work, oh, the cinematography. Yes. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the score, which we didn't really talk about too much, but I love how minimal it is. Oh, and like, it's a very subtle. Yeah, it doesn't tell you what to feel. It just amplifies what you're already feeling. Like that's why I like good scores like this, where like when they have the fight, like it's shocking. The score is piercing and shocking because that's how Elizabeth Moss is feeling. But it's like not telling you to feel that because you're already feeling that emotion. Like I feel like a lot of there's a lot of parts of this movie where it could use music and there's none. The opening scene when she first uh you know has the sheet stuck to the floor scene, like there's no music there, and it works so much better than what any other cheap horror movie would do and like tell you to be 
creeped out. And do you know you know what this what else this guy scored, right? Uh, Benjamin Wall Wall Wallfish or something like that. Mm-mm. So he did uh, the movie after this that he did was Mortal Kombat. Oh boy! Um, but he also did both of the It remakes. Those have good music. I like the I like the music for that. Um, he also did Serenity, that really really bad Matthew McConaughey. Oh, movie. I was gonna say that one, right? Not the Firefly sequel. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and apparently Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Oh, that score. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. He is credited as one of, like, him and Hans Zimmer are both credited for that movie. Interesting. Okay. All right. Now, this this score kicked ass. Besides that, Annabelle Creation, Cure for Wellness, Hidden Figures, Lights Out. Annabelle Creation was not terrible. I expected all those Hannib- those Annabelle movies to be bad. That one's not bad. There was one of them there. Yeah. Is that the one I liked? Is that the one that takes place in the past? Yeah. And it's like on a farm for like wayward children. Oh, yeah. yeah actually, I don't. I don't. I, yeah. I actually don't mind that one. I didn't. I didn't hate it. I didn't see the other one, though. Uh, Annabelle Comes Home or whatever. Ah. Oh, apparently he also scored the Flash movie that will maybe Never come out, come out no, at no. some point. <laughs> I hope that movie bombs. This movie, though, didn't bomb, and I'm glad for it because it's well-deserving, and I can't wait to see what Lee Winnell does next. If it is Escape from New York... Again, those those ads being up for almost a year really helped. Yeah. <laughs> Same with The Flash, right? I'm so fucking tired of hearing about this fucking movie. I don't care anymore. Nope, don't give a shit. <laughs> well, let's talk about some of the other parts of Invisible Man. Like, why don't we get into Prop Cop? And uh, for new listeners that are tuning in for the first time, Prop Cup is where we look at the props of the movie, The Invisible Man, and that includes set dressing, vehicles, pretty much anything that's physical on camera, and we take it for ourselves. And we're building a museum of props that we have taken from these movies. So, Mally, your pick was The Invisible Man, so why don't you tell me what prop you want? The dog. (laughs) He's the goodest boy. (laughs) The prop dog. (laughs) Prop dog. All right. I thought it was, you know, I thought... One of us would take the suit, but, you know, if the, unless the suit's practical, who cares? Yeah. I chose the pen because who doesn't like a good fancy pen? Yeah. Very nice pen. Yeah. Uh, not my cup of tea. I'm mm-hmm. more of a pilot G2 kind of guy. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. I like the, I like the, I like the 07 mm-hmm. um, myself. The 05 is a little thin for me. I, I don't mind a bit glide. That's how I am. Uh, I'm a they're, white they're trash. Fine. They're fine. They're fine. They're <laughs> fine. Um, you know, in a pinch. Or a Sharpie pen. I like a Sharpie pen. You psychopath. <laughs> uh, what about bit part, which is, of course, where we look at all of the extras in the movie, all the featured extras. Um, uh, anyone that preferably does not have a name to their character, and we recast them as ourselves just so we can build our filmography here. Oh, I got one. Go ahead. Uh, a little bit of a throwback to the OG, but I want to be the dude in the hospital covered in bandages. Yes. I knew I knew you would pick that. The guy that has the same look as the original Invisible yeah, that's Man. Yeah, that's an easy sag day rate. Mm-hmm, absolutely. You get to lay in a bed. You don't have to talk. Your face is covered. Hell yeah. Good choice. Well, what about you? I went with the security guard that shoots himself in the knee just because- oh. <laughs> That's a that's a great. I get I get I get squibbed. I mean, you get you get, yeah you get some you get some lines too. Mm-hmm. I get I, some lines. I get squibbed, and hopefully you could not do all of your lines while trying not to fucking smile. <laughs> like the dude is like halfway to giggling. <laughs> He's like, st- 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 <laughs> no, this is shut up, God, dude, dude, bro, shut up, 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 shut up. Dude, Cecilia, st- bro, shut up, shut up, <laughs> stay on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> stay, stay on the ground. Say, don't, do bro, shut up. I can't do the line. I can't do the line. Stay on the ground. <laughs> I'd have fun with that. Just, just, I've always wanted to be squibbed up, and it's a cool death. It's some cool camera work. I think that'd be fun to do. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's talk about the whole reason we're here. The crutch of the show, the silver lining. So we discussed the ending. Obviously, Elizabeth Moss may or may not get caught for this act. Uh, she is, as far as we know, still pregnant with this psychopath's baby. Oh, fuck. I forgot. Yeah, she's 100% still pregnant at the end of this movie. Holy shit. And her friends have been beaten to a pulp. Like, it's a lot's happened at the end of this movie. This It's nice that this guy gets his comeuppance, but, uh... She is 100% going to jail for murder. And she's already plenty traumatized, so this is just going to pile on to it. So, uh, Mally, we could use some silver linings here. So, what do you, what do you got? Dog survived. Dog survived. That's a good one. And he's coming home with me, baby. How long was he at this house? Like, I assume Adrian was taking care of him, but... Why would he? He's a psychopath. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know if he was. The dog didn't seem to like him. Well, I don't know. 
Well, mine was that even through all of this, Sydney still gets to go to grad school. Maybe. Maybe. And if not- She only she she only got one deposit, and after the end of this movie, I don't think she's getting that money right away. I do. I still think she gets it. Sorry, but- Not immediately. No she already fucking got way it. she gets that money immediately. She already got it, is my but point. But he wasn't actually dead. But then he did die, and his will- There's no way his will changed in between that okay, time. Okay, where the- where the fuck is my book? I got a book on criminal law somewhere. Hang the fuck on. If, if that uh, is not an adequate silver lining, then I will say the obvious, which is both of these terrible brothers are fucking dead. That's a better one. There you go. Yeah. The invisible men are no more. So. All right. Well, then how about this? If our silver linings didn't do it justice. One of ours did. <laughs> we like to pair the movies we watch for the week with a double feature that is uh, comparable or at least something that we think will balance things out for you if this movie left you feeling dour. So I'll go ahead and tell you mine. My double feature, I went with a movie I just saw recently that has very similar vibes to it that is a barrel of fucking fun uh, and a movie I wish we could cover on the show. Maybe we could justify it but until then i'm going with uh the russell crowe starring unhinged oh interesting which also features uh, a man terrorizing a woman for seemingly no reason and dude have you seen it right yeah oh uh, you didn't you didn't like that movie i had so much fucking fun with it <laughs> it's hey un unlike don't worry darling they push play and it played all the way through. Man, that movie. Which, <laughs> listeners, I know we make that joke all the time, but at my screening of Don't Worry Darling, they pushed play and it did not play all the way through. They had to restart it after about 10 minutes. Well, even if it did, that movie doesn't have an ending, so technically it doesn't play all the way through. So <laughs> Yeah, that's fair point. The movie just kind of ends. <laughs> um, Mine... I'm going to go with another movie where a cute little furry creature survives. <gasps> okay. The Suicide Squad. Oh, that's a good choice. Cause, also because of Storm Reed, right? Sure. She's in the Suicide Squad. You didn't know that? Forgot about <laughs> I was just making the furry creature connection. Sure, sure. But yeah. And we did talk about Joel Kinnaman earlier. We sure so, did. Cool. Yeah. Look at that. Nice. I made connections I didn't even realize. Well, I have a backup here that I, you know, I just had just in case, but since Nathan's not here that we know of, um, I'll go ahead and pitch that one too as his, just for the record. Another character that the gets fuck to is breathing <laughs> on the back of my neck. <laughs> Another character that gets to turn invisible. How about the Lord of the Rings, the fellowship? of the ring <laughs> oh jesus christ <laughs> extended edition of course we, we settle for nothing less on this show mm -mm. well we all, we try to do this with horror movies i know you don't think this is necessarily a horror movie but on imdb it's tagged as horror so we're gonna do it anyway what do you think is the best kill of the movie there's not a lot of deaths there's not but for me there's a correct answer here <laughs> um I have no idea. I'm trying to think of a death. It's the sister. It's definitely oh, the sister in the restaurant. Duh. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a great kill. Um, yeah. 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 And it's better than the one that Adrian did. I kind of wish they had killed the waiter. <laughs> I kind of wish they had killed the waiter. Just because. Just cause. <laughs> Yeah, that, that guy sucked. Fuck you, Taylor. <laughs> you know his name? <laughs> oh, yeah, they say his name. Well, he says his name a couple oh, of times. So My fault. Yeah. All right, fuck you, Taylor. <laughs> That is our thoughts on The Invisible Man for 2020. If you want to get your thoughts heard, you can email them to us at playlist at gmail.com, or you can DM us on Instagram or Twitter. Um, you can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, where you can watch clips from the show and a whole bunch of other stuff. If you think we care about your thoughts. <laughs> You can also follow us over on Reddit and on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist for a whole Wikipedia's worth of information on the show there. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe, rate, feedback, all the good stuff. And the most important thing you can do for our show is you can, uh, you know, tell your friends and family about it. Tell uh, people you follow on social media and who follow you about the show. That'd be great. And he's not here. That we know of. I mean, I did hear a sneeze in the corner of the room a minute ago and didn't see anybody, but... I have heard heavy breathing mm -hmm, next to me. Mm -hmm. Like, just fucking gasping. <laughs> like, this motherfucker just ran a lap or something. <laughs> Got, like, like, he almost has his hands on his knees and he's bent over just trying to catch I his know. breath. <laughs> <laughs> he's not here, but next week is Nathan's choice. So, why don't we see if we could maybe uh, peek into the future and hear a clue from him right now. 
Surprise! Oh, hey! Oh, Nathan, you're back! Oh. Hey, it's me. I've been invisible. I've been oh, wearing this, my God. this suit made of blinking buttholes this whole oh, time. Oh my God! Oh, you got to give me a warning next time you do that. Jesus! Well, Christ. you didn't think I was gonna mess up my thirty plus episode streak, did you? <laughs> Was it worth the bit for you to just speak silent the whole episode? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Always. All right. At all times worth the bit. Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, clue. Uh-huh. A clue for next time, right? Uh-huh. Uh, so uh, for, for next week's movie, let's just know that we do not solve our our problems by hitting people. Okay. We solve them by shooting them. Oh, oh, even better. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, bye. <laughs> oh, bye. Bye. <laughs> Well, that was the clue for next week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, I don't have anything else to discuss. Mal, is there anything that we forgot to talk about that you want to bring up? No, I'm hungry. I, know. I want some. St- I want. I want some buttered noodles, a hamburger, <laughs> and some gas station and sushi. I want to uh, go put on a Limp Biscuit album right now. So. It's that chocolate starfish in that hot dog flavored water. Uh. What if he what if he told her we got everything you can want? We've got hot dog flavored water and we've got chocolate stuff and buttered noodles. <laughs> oh god. Well, until next week where we're discussing whatever movie it is that Nathan has picked for us. Uh as always, I'm sorry to the Italians. <laughs> And rest in peace, oatmeal, because I forgot to say it earlier. Oh, hey, so. R.I.P. my boy Donald Pleasant. <laughs> no, only on the Halloween episodes. Get the fuck out uh, of here. R.I.P. Nathan. <laughs> Excelsior. 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 Look at us. Jesus Christ, that was a long one. Uh, anyway, if you're still here, thanks for listening. And remember, you can always check out our back catalog for over 100 episodes of the show. Like, subscribe, and leave feedback if you want. And tune in next week for another one. Laters.